they care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it at 1-800-5800-TALK. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. We appreciate it. Here we are together again on the radio. Uh, we talk about money on this program all the time. Uh, essentially, I happen to believe, I just happen to believe that uh, a man's inspiration for making money or being successful at anything, whether it be Vincent Van Gogh uh, painting uh, some of the great art of our time, or Bill Gates uh, uh, creating DOS or Windows, or whether it be Warren Buffett buying up Dairy Queen, or whatever it is, guys want money so they can get a better grade of chicks. I really do believe that's one of our primary motivations for being successful at something. And it's not an accident that the guys who are successful at something get better chicks. We do. No doubt about it. The more money I've made, the more I've upgraded over the years. There's no doubt about it. And I'm very honest about it. Now, the trick, of course, is not to give all that money to the women you're with. Just let them see it. Just let them smell it. Just let them have a little taste, but don't let them eat the whole pie. Never, never, never. Many of you boys uh, never learn, but we keep telling you. Well, we do believe, though, that money is important. I, I have said on this program that I revere money, that I respect money. I respect what money does, and I see money as the only way to quantify in numbers the things you have accomplished over time. You know, when you go to school, you can get a grade point average, or you can take an SAT test or an LSAT, and there's ways to quantify how much you've studied, how much work you've done, how smart you are. How do you quantify what you've accomplished as an adult? Money. That's how you do it. It's all about the money. Women do it, too, by the way, because when a woman uh, gets with you and then takes half of everything you have, it's assumed, generally, that she's great in bed or looks great with her clothes off or... Uh, has talents that people don't know about. <laughs> but it's assumed that there's some talent involved. And for a man, money is the embodiment. Pal, if you're making $23,000 a year and you're satisfied with that, I don't care what you think. The rest of the world thinks you're a loser. That's the bottom line. These are some of the things we talk about on the show all the time. Now, our guest, Bruce Berman, uh, wrote a book, which he uh, subtitles A Master's Course in Becoming a Millionaire. And I know a lot of you boys have said to me, how do I make money? You want to know how to make money. Okay. His book is called I Got Here, You Can Too. And he has some very interesting opinions that are going to uh, shock and amaze and probably piss off some of you out there. But uh, these are opinions I happen to agree with. And so rather than my saying them, I'll let him take all the heat this evening. Uh, Bruce, thanks for coming in. Hey, Tom. Thanks a lot for having me on the show. And uh, women in business, uh, couldn't agree with you more. Um, two of my favorite topics, and the more money you have, uh, the more women you have. And uh, as far as uh, women, money, leaving you, I got five ex-wives. The more money I make, every once in a while, I just upgrade, and off they go. See, and that's what I've been telling people. You know, you continue to upgrade like you are uh, getting a new luxury car. I always say, you know, out there somewhere, there's a 1993 BMW that I drove. And uh, no, you can't smell the leather anymore, and... Uh, there's a couple of uh, crunches and holes and gouges in the leather. Uh, the car every once in a while stalls. But you know what? It's still a BMW. And somewhere, Poindexter from the IT department is driving that car. Oh, I, that, uh, I and all my boys have driven it already. Uh, but uh, there's somebody else still driving that Beamer out there somewhere. It's probably got a hole in the chassis somewhere. But you know what? It, it's still a Beamer. We all drove it, and now someone else is going to drive it. And that's, that's really how I see women, is, is they are luxury cars that eventually have to be upgraded. Well, Tom, you know, I started off, my first uh, wife was a cocktail waitress at my favorite bar, and wife number five was a Playboy Playmate. There we go. And uh, you talk about upgrading, and uh, each time I get involved with a prettier girl, I see that they know less and less about business. You have very little respect for women's ability in the business world. Uh, tell us why. Well, it's not that I have less respect for women. It's just what they seem to have, seem to have accomplished. Like the number one rule in investment banking is what we call don't pitch the bitch. 
Um, it not, it's not something that I invented. It's just something that's just a reality. Now, in my book, I wrote around how women can get over that, get past that, and still succeed in business. But they've got to be willing to do the work. And what, does, what does that mean, don't pitch the bitch? Um, long time ago, I had a, a woman come to me with a medical product that she wanted to uh, invent, needed, needed money for. It was a fabulous product. I put together a whole team of guys. My partner says to me, don't pitch the bitch. In other words, stay away from women. I, I went against him. I went ahead and started funding this company. And the woman comes to me one day and says, guess what? I uh, just got engaged. Uh, my new, new husband wants to have a baby right away. And we're closing down the company. And a uh, year's worth of my work and a lot of investor dollars just walked away. A man would never walk away from a winning deal. And we'll stay there and finish it through to completion. Uh, work 16 hours a day if necessary, seven days a week if necessary. Travel if necessary. Uh, commit to be there for an extended period of time, if not forever, w with a good deal, and uh, would not let his personal life or his social life interfere with uh, And, of course, there are exceptions to every rule, but generally speaking, men are the ones who put in the hard work, roll up their sleeves, work the long hours, and make the commitment. Well, you've got men, men are logical, and women are emotional. And there is no place for emotion in the business world. You cannot close a deal when you're having a bad hair day. You can't close a deal that time of the month. You cannot let emotions get in the way of business. Business is all about logic. A listener, uh, coincidentally, who did not know we were going to do this show, just faxed me a fascinating set of statistics, five particular uh, areas here. And uh, it talks about women and startup businesses. It's fascinating that this came in because we, we did not announce you were going to be here or anything. Here you are. This came in before this hour began. And uh, this is a study done by the Rochester Institute of Technology. And it says here that women are more likely than men to pursue self-employment. But why do they do it? You know, why, why do women start businesses? Here are the statistics. I'm sure you won't be surprised by any of this. Top reasons women start businesses. Career flexibility. Women, 85.4%. Men, 50.8%. Family-friendly policies, meaning you can show up for work when you feel like it, and when Jimmy has the sniffles, you can stay home, or your daughter has a dance recital to go to, you're off, and uh, you'll come in when you feel like it. Family obligations. Women, 54.1%. Men, 22.8%. Now, on, on the men's side, the reasons men start businesses? Building wealth. Men, 75.9%. Women, 29.1%. And advancement. Men, 42.7%. Women, 23.4%. So women start businesses so they can have the freedom to show up at work if they feel like it or not, or take care of the family or not, come in, go as they please, travel when they want to, uh, not show up at all if they don't want to, and men want to make money. You know, Tom, for 20 years as an employer, I've listened to women tell me, look, I'm a single mom, I've got children, uh, I need this time off, this time off, this time off. Well, you know what? Three years ago, I found myself a single father raising two kids without any help whatsoever, and I run a $100 million company. So you can run a business, you can work, and you can take care of your family. You just got to know your priorities and be willing to take them. And the thing about women in business, they can do it. I show them how to do it in my book. They got to be willing to follow the direction, and that's another. But they're not willing to follow. That, that's exactly the problem. Is I have you have to know your strengths and your weaknesses to survive in business. I know my strengths. I know my weaknesses. Find me a woman that will tell you, yes, I don't do this well. I have never once in my life found one that'll admit that there's something she can't do. That is a. Uh, recipe for failure in business. Well, women have been reading all these articles about how they can have it all for so many years. They now believe that. Well, you know, you tell yourself the same thing over and over. Enough times you start believing it. And, um, you know, if, if I, uh, women keep telling me that they can build these successful, run these successful companies, name me six women CEO of Fortune 500 companies. You can't. There isn't. There's a hand. They'll say it's discrimination. It's sexism. <clears throat> well, yeah, it's sexism. Then, then show me five companies that women have started, not run, that started that are big companies today. There, there, there aren't there. I mean, take eBay. A guy starts a company, it's now a billion-dollar company, to sell Pez dispensers for his wife. His wife cannot sell Pez dispensers. So he starts this company and builds it into a big company. There are not companies that have been started by women that are huge. There are a few exceptions. Martha Stewart. 
Okay? And guess what, girls? She just sent you back a hundred years. The problem she had is going to affect women for a long time. The money she allegedly made in her alleged insider trading pales in comparison to the cash flow of her company. It's the stupidest thing I ever heard of. Tom, you know, I've owned a stock brokerage firm. She was a licensed stock broker. There's no question that they know exactly what the rules are. It was pro If she did what they alleged she did, it was, it was the dumbest decision I've ever seen. A man is not going to risk uh, for $200,000. He's not going to risk a billion dollars. You also say that uh, if, if, if a woman comes up with an idea for a product or an idea for a company, uh, even if the woman came up with it, she should get men and surround herself with men so the company will appear to be run by men, and that's a better way to get financing and to be taken serious. Absolutely. Now you're giving away the secrets that are in my book. And what I show is I show women how to do it. I, first of all, I tell them, here are your obstacles. And if you can get over the denial that you have these obstacles and you can follow the direction that I've laid out for you, you can succeed. I, you know, you talk about minorities. I took a 26-year-old African-American man. Who, he wanted to be the, a president, CEO of a publicly traded company. Now, that guy is a minority. You know what? Within six months, that man's company was public, and, he, and it was worth $100 million. Now, what did he do? He followed the direction laid out in my course. All right, we'll take a break. We'll come back with Bruce Berman. His book is called I Got Here, You Can Too. We've got some really pissed off women calling in, and I'm, I'm sure that you'll be ready for them, Bruce, as they call in here at 1 800 5800. Tom, it's 1 800 5800 866. Our guest, Bruce Berman. His book is called I Got Here, You Can Too. Tom Likas. 1 800 5800. Tom. Lady, how old are you? I'm 21 years old. You're over the hill. I mean, I can't waste my time with you. The point of me calling in was not to talk to some immature man that wants to... You're a wrinkled to... douchebag. The Tom Likas Show. Wow. Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. We're here with Bruce Berman. His book is called I Got Here, You Can Too. KC on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. What's going on? I'm just doing a radio show here. some things about some of the women that have started a lot of companies. Uh, you know, The Gap, Doris Fisher. Uh, you've got uh, Mrs. Hill's Cookies. You've got uh, Jenny Craig. you got well, you got a lot of large companies. Was well, Jenny Craig, though, run by her husband. And uh, as far as The Gap is concerned, that's run by a guy named Paul Pressler. I don't know of any... Uh... Yeah, he's a, well, right. He's the CEO of, of the... And The Gap is a publicly yeah. traded company. I can buy stock in The Gap. It's not yeah, individually really. owned by anybody. Uh, Mrs. Fields' husband's an investment banker, and he took them public and raised her all the money. Well, either way, the Fisher, the Doris Fisher was one of the main people behind The Gap. And, you know, I mean, they have a private art collection in San Francisco right now. That's, that's all, you know, you read their proxy. It's all in there. Anyhow, it's just, I, I just don't think that, I mean, I, I totally understand you when you're saying that, you know, you can help them get that way. But it's You're, you're in your car right now, aren't you? Look out, look, look out the window. Do you see a McDonald's? A man company. Do you see a Burger King? A man company. Do you see Shell Oil? A man company. Everything you see in your car was started by a man. You can pick out the exceptions. But not the rule. Yeah, there are a few. But see, my point is, I'm going to help women. My book's not about helping women. My book is about helping people become millionaires. But I had to include women. I'm going to show them how to do it, how to get over the hurdles. There's exceptions to every rule. No, that's great. That's great. I, the one thing, you know, I don't know if you haven't read your book yet. I'm going to have to read it. But the, uh, you know, women, when they, women's executives, they go after each other worse than, than male executives. Well, first of all, there isn't that many women executives. I book, go to BruceABerman.com. But I'll tell you, here's the problem with women executives. I'm an executive. I'm sitting in a meeting, and I feel sorry for the good-looking ones. So let's say you're sitting in a meeting, and here's some woman executive trying to sell me something, and she is hot. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm not thinking about the business deal. I am blowing her time. I'm just looking at the woman. But there just isn't as many. Like you, you, you popped off three, and it turns out you only had one. Name me five women CEO of Fortune 500 companies. And even better, even better than that, name me ones that started the company. Hey, hey Grant, I'm saying that, but you, you just were basically kind of saying that there weren't, you know, there weren't that many, and there, there actually there are. And there's, there's a lot that sit okay. on the board for a lot of those. You know, the Fortune 500 companies. I don't know names. I don't there, know exactly. there is not 
five women CEO of Fortune 500 companies, not since Martha That's got CEO kicked off. eBay. By the way, sitting on the board of a company doesn't mean you know anything about the business. Uh, no, the, I, I agree. The company that manages this network had O.J. Simpson on the board of directors, okay? It doesn't tell you anything about the person's ability in the business world. No, but it means that they, they actually would have say in the, in the vote of what happens with that company. So anyhow, but I'm just saying it's like, it, yeah, it is tougher for them to get there, but, you know, a lot of them do get there, and they have to work twice as hard to do it. Exactly. They have to work as, as hard as Everybody has to work twice as hard. Everybody has. The, the, the deal is, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Bruce, the people who are successful all have to work twice as hard as the people who aren't. Not only do they have to work hard, but they've got to work smart. And they've got to be able to take, and they've got to admit their strengths and admit their weaknesses. Absolutely. All right, Casey, thank you. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Sharon on the Tom Likas Show for Bruce Berman. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Sharon. How are you? Do you care, dear? Oh, I definitely care. I'm doing great. Good for you. Um, yeah, I was a vice president for a bank, and it took me a while to get there. Um, but I have to say that any woman who starts arguing with you guys is only doing it because she knows it's true <laughs> what you're saying. Women are the biggest pains when it comes to a vice presidency level. Women at that level are, are they're difficult to deal with for all the reasons you're pointing out. Sharon, um, did a woman start that bank? Oh, start the bank? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm waiting for people to tell me about all these wonderful companies that were started by women that are huge today. Yeah, I, well... Even, you're right. It's going to be difficult for somebody to find that, and it's going to be even more difficult for somebody to call up and, and, and argue with you, argue against you with any kind of reasoning. That and by the way, and this is something, this is not from Bruce, this is from me. Uh, every year, Fortune Magazine, I, I talk about this all the time, but it kind of ties in. Fortune Magazine has a, 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 an issue called the Power 50 which lists the 50 most powerful women executives. And if you've ever seen the photos attached to each one of these women, you wouldn't like, and a man would not want to go out with any of them. Um, I can now, I'm not going to pin that on Bruce, that. but just, <laughs> just get a copy of the Power 50 edition of Fortune Magazine and look at these hogs. Look at these fuddly. Well, you know what? Because what happens is in order to become in those positions, you have to be... You have to have no social life. Right. You have to be the yeah, woman who had Fridays and Saturdays to study for your MBA while other chicks are being flown to the south of France to take out the $300 meal. Exactly right. One of the first things I tell women is dress down. Try, don't, don't walk into a meeting trying to look like a bombshell. Dress down. Oh, my gosh. You've got to walk in looking as professional as any man sitting around that table. Otherwise, you're right. They're not looking at what you're saying. They're looking at your legs. And the problem is that in order to keep their attention, you have to go in. You've got to be concise. You can't be a woman who's all over the place. You've got to be concise. You've got to be organized. You've got to be thinking like a man when you go in there. And you have to know how to deal with men. The best advice I could give women is go out and get yourself on a man's basketball team and learn how to compete against men. Look at you, Sharon. Thanks for the call. Our guest, Bruce Berman, his book, I Got Here, You Can Too. More of your telephone calls at 1-800-5800-TOM are coming up. The Tom Likas Show. Los Angeles at 1-800-5800-TOM is your telephone number. Our guest, Bruce A. Berman, his book, I Got Here, You Can Too. The subtitle is A Master's Course in Becoming a Millionaire. But he does not think highly of the idea of women out there trying to uh, get financing for businesses and, uh, and uh, women's commitment uh, to uh, staying with business ideas. Lisa on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, um, Bruce? Yeah, Lisa. My, I'm not calling to argue with you. I, I have more of a question. Okay. What about the company um, Mary Kay Cosmetics? Wasn't that started by a woman? It's a billion-dollar company now? Um, Mary Kay probably was started by a woman. Again, you're just pointing out one out of thousands and thousands of companies. My point is, isn't that women can't be successful. Mm -hmm. my, my point is that... There's only a few out of a hundred or a few out of a thousand. And if you want to be successful and you're a woman, you need to be on an equal playing field. How do you get on an equal playing field? You learn what men learn. I have sold more books to women than men. Women are trying to get to an equal playing field. So that's well, what you need. 
That's what you need to do. But you can't be on an equal playing field unless you're willing to show You've up. You've got to work hard every day. Well, 10, 12, 14 first. hours a day. Stop with us. Family friendly workplaces and flexible work hours. Uh, people who have flexible hours are not as successful as people who show up every day for the grind. Well, let me ask you this. I'm 30 years old, and I work for um, an aerospace company, and I've actually started my own business on the side. I incorporated in Nevada. Okay, that's a great place to incorporate. Okay, and it's all brand new to me and everything, but I guess I'm asking how could your book benefit me at this phase in my, my uh, business because I just incorporated in April. Yeah, my so book what, is my book basically tells I, what I've done. I've helped thousands of companies get funded. I've raised millions of dollars. I've taken companies public and got billions of dollars in market cap. I've taken all the knowledge I had in the last 25 years and put it in a book. Now, just ta all you got to do is take a look, read the book, go to my website, BruceABerman.com, and you got it. All right, Lisa, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. It's Matt on the Tom Likas Show for Bruce Berman. Hello. Hi, Tom, Bruce. How's it going? Hey, excellent here. Good. It, uh, just a, 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 maybe an observation and then a comment. Um, I had the unfortunate, uh, uh, unfortunate for about eight years back in the 90s of working for several different women who uh, around their peers and their bosses would put on all the feminine charm possible, but when it came to their subordinates, they couldn't be meaner or nastier if they tried. Sounds like my five ex-wives. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really nice up front. Get in the bedroom and they turn into a witch. Well, and, and what it was is, is, you know, they had to be militant and they had to prove to you that they had earned the right to be your boss, to, to be domineering or, or to be over you. You know, when, what they didn't realize is that, you know, earn my respect, work with me, and then, and then you know, you're my peer. You're, you're just like anyone else, man or woman. But these ladies, uh, you know, insisted on forcing it down my throat that I earned the right to be here. You know, I'm much better than you are. You'll never be what I am um, in spite of the fact that I'm a woman. And, and they were just absolutely horrible. And uh, uh, now anytime I, I come across a woman in management, I, I can't help but think, you know, she's either a lesbian or she's got something going on there um, because of this experience, you know, my own personal experience. Tom, it's time for you to step up to the plate, start your own company, be your own boss. Matt, thank you for the call. One eight. Oh yeah, one eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. This is Julie on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Great. Good. Well, my my point is, I want to um, bring up Martha Stewart, whether she's corrupt or not, because um, let's face it, plenty of men in business are corrupt. And as far as women go, you know, we're multitasked, and you know, we handle a lot of crap, and I'm one of them. So I pull my weight with my husband, and we're self-employed business owners, and there's a lot of women out there that are that are doing it all. Uh, no, I don't agree with that. I don't think anybody's doing it all. You don't? No, I don't. I really don't believe that. I, I, you, you, may be doing, you may be doing a little bit of everything, but none of it great. Uh, these people who say they can have it all, and they drop their kids off at their grandmothers or their daycare centers or other care providers or caregivers, like they like to call them. These people who say, uh, oh, you know, it's not the quantity of the time, it's the quality of the time, and rationalize they're not being around at home at all. They're not doing it all. They're doing it all badly. Well, yes, I believe that some of us are badly, and then there's some of us that basically have... Oh, yes, you're the exception to the rule. Yeah, do you have kids? I have two children. Yeah, and who That's takes right. care of them while you're working 16 hours a day? Um, I do part of the time while I'm working. You take care of them. And how, what's, what is the quality of your work while you are watching children? I'm doing on, I'm on, my, well, one of them's in school now, so, but. All right, but what is the quality of your work when you are babysitting um, while you are working? How many financing deals do you do with a child in the room? How many business meetings with bankers do you have? How many sales do you complete with a, with a baby or a child sitting around? Well, Tom, let me tell you, I moved over from uh, North Idaho five years ago to the Seattle area and basically helped get my construction company with my husband off the ground. And I'm talking... So he's doing most of the work while you're babysitting? Uh, no, telemarketing for to get them out in, in people's homes to go out there and sell jobs. So you are telemarketing? You're a no, telephone no. solicitor? Uh, no. While your husband is out doing construction, what? Both. I do a lot of different t tasks. What do you do exactly? Um, many things. Let's see, I'm a real estate um, person. I'm in real estate. You're not going to be one of these women who says that you're a chauffeur and a cab driver and a cook and a bottle washer. You know, you just 
prove the point on why I, you 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 are so divided in so many different fields. You can't focus on one. It's going to be hard hard to be successful in one business when you got 15 businesses going. Men focus on one business at a time. When you focus on 15 businesses at a time, you are going to fail. I haven't so far. I'm doing quite well. Well, you can't be doing quite well if you're sitting there with your kids on your lap making telephone calls. No, no, no. If you're doing quite well, somebody be taking care of your kids from nine to five. You misunderstood me. I got it. This is in the very beginning to get it going. This is okay. So, so today, how many hours a week are you working? Uh, a lot, like forty plus. Okay, forty. Wow. 40 that, plus hours a okay, wow. when you get to seventy, hours. join the big boy club. No, wow. no, no, no. It, that's all my job. Then come home with. Then I come home with the children. We're not talking about what you do at home. We're talking about at your business. How many hours do you work at a job or at your business? Forty. Okay. That is not enough to run ten different businesses at once. Sixty hours into one company is a good start. Forty hours into ten different projects. My puts the other part in into the job. Ah. There we go. Okay. Hundred plus hours. Ah, that he does. Thank you for proving our point. <laughs> yeah, you just proved our point. Yeah, you proved it. No doubt about Thank it, you. Julie. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Why can't, like, someone court a person anymore? It's all about getting in their pants. It is all about getting in their pants, dear. And you know what? For men, it always has been. The Tom Likey Show. <laughs> Like his show with our guest Bruce A. Berman, his book I Got Here, You Can Too. And you can get it at his website, BruceABerman.com. Let's go to your calls here at 1 800 5800 Tom. Arnie on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How's it going now? All right. First of all, I want to tell you that I've been practicing what you've been preaching since 1985 and it works. Love that. And, uh, but getting back, I'm a director for a backgrounds unit and I have five female employees and one male. And I'm telling you, there's not one week that goes by that they have to take their son or daughter to the doctors. They have to get off early to pick up their son from work. And um, they don't buckle down. They don't sacrifice. And they don't give that 110% to go to school and get that education and get that money that's out there to make. Myself, I did. I buckled down while going to school full-time, working full-time going to school full-time and completed my bachelor's degree in two years, you know, and that's something that they have to take in, in consideration. And that's why I'm making close to 100000 a year, and they're not. I have no doubt that what you're saying is true, Arnie. I thank you for that. It's Jillian on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi. Hi, Bruce. Hello, uh, Jillian. Hi. I, I just wanted to make a comment. Um that women, any, the women were sold a bill of goods in the 70s to believe that, or the 80s, whenever the women's movement happened, that sure, oh yeah, you can have kids and you can be a great mom and you can be a successful executive. And you know what? It, it doesn't have anything to do with women's abilities. It has to do with the fact that you have to pick a path in life. You have to pick if you want to succeed wildly in business or if you want to dedicate yourself to, you know, having a family that you actually see and kids that you actually raise. I, I believe in my heart, I also have a bachelor's degree. The last caller, it doesn't have anything to do with hard work. It has to do with making a choice and then working hard. I mean, I, I like to think that if I had chosen a career path, I would have been as successful at that as I am being a mother. But I just, I think women who think that they're failing because they have to take their kids to the doctor, well, that's because you're a mother. Be a mother. I mean, that, that's how I feel about it. I don't, I mean, I don't think women should become so defensive about that, about that. You can either pick to work or you can pick not to work. I have two children. I raise them full time. I work full time. You can. Do, it's a question of how many hours a day you want to put in. Exactly. Yeah. No. And I, but I just don't think women women tend to take it as an attack. Like, oh, you're not good enough. You can't do enough. You're not capable enough. There's, you know, there's only so many hours in a day. I mean, you know, something has to give. It always has to give. And I think that that's. I mean, I know that that's why there's not as many women CEOs because, you know, somebody's got to at the end of the day be better take the kids to the doctor. I mean, you know, in most cases. Well, and, uh, but that's why I want to stop seeing these articles about sexism and glass ceilings and institutionalized sexism and blah, blah, blah. Women are not successful in business uh, to the same extent as men because they're not willing to commit to being at that business when they are needed all the time. And men are. And, and the reason men are willing is not because we're better people. It's because we know in this country that you have a gun to your head. Uh, you, you go to school and when you graduate from whatever 
whatever university or high school or whatever, you're then chained to a desk for the rest of your life. Because no woman will go out with you unless you're successful. Nobody will marry you unless you've got at least enough money to survive on and you're willing to take care of all the responsibilities. And so men know we have no choice but to show up 8, 10, 12 hours a day, 5, 6, 7 days. We don't have a choice. And women feel like they've got the choice. I can work. I can stay home. I can become an MD. I can uh, be a, a bitch. I can uh, go shopping. I can work part-time. I can come in for six months and not come in for six months. Men have a different attitude about work, period. Well, I mean, I certainly don't consider what I do to be some kind of a vacation. I mean, it's kind of it's a chosen vocation. No, but the point is men don't have that choice. You're right. Well, if you met a man in a bar and he said to you, what I want to do is stay home and raise your kids, you'd have spit in his face. Well, yeah, but, but there are... That's my point. He didn't have a choice. Your husband didn't have a choice. You had a choice. Well, I mean, I could have married... I, my husband could have married a woman... And I know personally a very successful woman whose husband stays home. That's their arrangement. How many of a man bites dog? How many of those are there, please? Well, and how I many of them are attractive enough for a man to be able to maintain an erection? Yeah, how, how many? Do you, how many men want to please. stay home and change diapers and wipe noses all day? Not very many. Well, because we know you don't respect us when we do it. Well, we know I, you don't. Well, I would. I, I tell you I, what, if I could sit home and watch ESPN while you make seven figures, and tell you what, I'm in. In. <laughs> I'll wipe a nose and watch ESPN. You pay the bills. And then, then if I don't like you and I feel like having sex with uh, somebody else, I'll divorce you and take half of everything you got. That sounds like a pretty good deal. Well, boy, I mean, you get very angry about it. I mean, I'm just... You know what? I... Men are angry. I just vocalize what a lot of men feel, which is that women have options men don't have. And you know as well as I do that the vast majority of women, if you met a man at a bar and you said, Hi, what do you do for a living? Well, I have a job for now, but I'm hoping to meet somebody and settle down and take care of the house while they go out to work. You'd laugh at his face. Uh, I mean, yeah, you're right. I would I wouldn't laugh at his face, but that does not appeal to me. No, it doesn't. And if you had to work every day, day in, day out, the next 35, 40 years, yeah, you'd be pissed off and angry and bitter, too. But I do work. I mean, I work. Not dear. I, I go to bed, bed exhausted every night. I mean, you may... Uh. So that's fine. Here, I know that. Please. And I'm not only that, a kid is 18 years, not 35 years, all right? Well, my husband, will, I'm sure, will be retired by then. Oh, well, wonderful. There you go. Yeah. But the point is, it, it, that means he's a lot older than you are, and he's been working for some time. No, he's not. He's not older than me. He's a year older than me. He's a year old. So he's been, oh, he's going to be retired at 48? What? We've been, we, we've been working for, he's been working for he's a while. He's been working. Yeah. Yeah, get it right. Financial he's hey, been working. I worked before I had kids, and I socked away a lot of money you, in my retirement. You worked before you had kids. You're 30. How long did you work? I have six years. I kids. Wow. Ooh, six, years. six whole years. You know, you can. Ooh. I don't mind at all. You can laugh all you want. I work hard, <laughs> and I have a very respected, quote-unquote, profession in my mind. I wake up every What profession? But being a parent. Oh, being a parent. I see. Yeah. I see. But you realize if you feel like doing the laundry at 8 o'clock or 10 o'clock or 12 o'clock or 2 o'clock, there's no deadlines. So there are people who have there's no deadlines that can work at night. You know what? i got to be here at 3 o'clock every goddamn day, whether I like it or not, okay? There's no saying, well, I'll just come in at 5 or 6.30. Yeah, well, you know what? I or, my I, I, you know what? I'm going to knock off the, the rest of the week and uh, take a nap. I, there's no doing that. I don't do that either. Please. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Five eight hundred Tom. Real. I watch the show, but I don't agree with everything, and I just want. But to... you can't stop listening. It's like a bad car wreck. All of a sudden, you you, you see one, you, you stop on the highway. Oh wait! Oh no! Oh God! Oh the humanity! Oh Jesus! It's the Tom Likas Show. <laughs> the Tom Likas Show. Our right, guest, Bruce A. Berman. His book is called I Got Here, You Can Too. Now, you can only get the book on the website. Is that the deal? Either the website or call my toll-free number, one eight seven seven five berman That's 877-523-7626. And the uh, website is Bruce A. Berman. Berman. B -E com. Yeah, Berman is B-E-R-M-A-N. If you can't spell Bruce, you're probably not a listener. You're probably not going to succeed in business. <laughs> so you're illiterate. Uh, let's try one more here. Cindy on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Sydney. Well, you know, I think you're absolutely right. Men really don't have a choice 
but to provide for the family. Therefore, they have to work that 60, 70 hours a week. But what I'd like to tell you, Tom, and the viewers or the listeners out there, is that you should give women credit, too. They're the ones that are home with their child. Oh, that's not necessarily true, darling. Some are, some are not. Well, okay, I'm, I'm 45 years old. My husband's the same age, and he works close to 80 hours a week and provides for the family. He's a great guy, and I love him very much. If he provides for the family, and he's home with us when he can be. But when he's not at home, I am the one that's picking up the pieces at home. I'm the one that are, that's up all night long when the children are sick. I'm the one that goes to the children's conferences at school. So it's not like we're home eating bonbons. Yeah, but you know what, dear? You volunteered for that gig. And, in fact, uh, you had that plan long before you met your husband. Did my he husband. made your dreams come true. Well, and so did my husband. It's not like you're doing him a favor. Well, of course I'm doing him a favor. I'm oh, you are? You're doing him a favor. So he works 80 hours a week, and you're doing him a